First lesson this morning is taken from 1 John. <clears throat> See what love the Father has given us, that we should be called children of God, <clears throat> that this is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now. What we will be has not yet been revealed. What we do know is that when he is revealed, we will be like him, for he will see him as he is. And all who have this hope in him purify themselves just as he is pure. Everyone who commits sin is guilty of lawlessness. Sin is lawlessness. You know that he has revealed to take away sins, and in him there is no sin. No one who abides in him sins. No one who sins has either seen him or known him. Little children, let no one deceive you. Everyone who does what is right is righteous, just as he is righteous. The gospel lesson this morning is taken from Luke 24. Mm. Oh, yeah. While they were talking about this, Jesus himself stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. They were startled and terrified and thought that they were seeing a ghost. He said to them, Why are you frightened? And why do doubts arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet. See that it is myself. Touch me and see. For a ghost does not have flesh and bones as you see that I have. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. While in their joy, they were disbelieving and still wondering, he said to them, have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish and he took it and ate in their presence. Then he said to them, these are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures and said to them, thus it is written that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things, and see, I am sending upon you what my Father promised. So stay here in the city until you have been clothed with power from on high. This is the word of the Lord. Resurrection makes you hungry. Do you have anything to eat? That's what Jesus asks the disciples. Do you have anything to eat? Because resurrection makes you hungry. And in the gospel lesson, broiled fish is just the ticket. We are in the church season of Easter. I know it's easy to think of Easter as a single day, Yet the church has all these great seasons, Lent, Advent, to name two. And right now, the season of Easter, the days between Easter Sunday and Pentecost Sunday. And the season of Easter is all about the resurrected Jesus popping up here, there, and everywhere. Last week in the Gospel, it, in the Gospel of John, Jesus appeared in an upper room where the disciples were behind locked doors. Peace, Jesus said, always peace. Christ always speaks a word of peace. 
And just before the lesson that Hal read, Jesus appears to some disciples on the road to Emmaus. While they were still talking about that, bam, in our gospel lesson today, Jesus shows up again, stood among them, scripture says. So Jesus appears, and for the disciples, is it high fives all around? He's back, just like he said he'd be. No. Scripture tells us they are startled. Scripture tells us they are terrified. So Jesus talks to them and calms them down. It's really me, he says. Look at my hands. Look at my feet. Don't be afraid. I'm not a ghost, Jesus says. Touch me and see. So now, is it high fives all around for the disciples? Yeah, baby, he's back, just like he said he'd be. Still no. Because while in their joy, they were disbelieving and still wondering. I love that. And then, because resurrection makes you hungry, Jesus says, have you anything here to eat? The eating's very important. In the ancient world, this was proof that Jesus wasn't a ghost. It might seem like an odd detail, broiled fish even, but this indicated to the first folks who heard this lesson that Jesus was there in the flesh, not a figment of their imagination, not an apparition, in the flesh because he was chowing down. There's so much good news in this lesson that I hardly even know where to begin. High fives all around if you've ever been startled. High fives all around if you've ever been afraid. High fives all around if you've ever been disbelieving and maybe wondering, even in your joy. I particularly love the disbelieving and still wondering, even in your joy. So if you would have been one of those people getting a high five, you and I are in such good company. The disciples were these things, the disciples. The disciples for whom Jesus was right there, picking fish bones out of his teeth. So if or when, you and I may be disbelieving and find ourselves wondering a bit or a lot about all this, even in our joy. All that wrapped up together, God is saying, yes, you and I and the disciples all together, high five for being human, high five for being loved. But there's more. We've started peace and healing services here once a month on the first Wednesday of each month. We've had two, and I went to the one this past Wednesday, and they are great. They're short. There's no sermon. The service is quiet. There are prayers spoken aloud and prayers for you personally, but only if you want. And I want to thank Christy Downey for bringing this to our church. I advertise these services on Facebook. If you are on Facebook, you've probably seen it. I post these services on the Londonderry Community Forum, on our church Facebook page, and on the Manchester Community Forum. And at the top of the Facebook post, I write, please come to this service. Please come to this service to pray for the world, to pray for yourself, to pray for others. This week, in response to that invitation on Facebook, someone wrote this, or, after the invitation to come and pray, or you could feed the hungry, become a big brother or sister, or help the homeless. Huh. At first I was a little mad, but to enter into the social media fray 
is to accept that not one cannot control what happens. And then I thought, oh, this is good. For me, it's not an either or prayer or feeding the hungry, prayer or helping young people, prayer or helping the homeless working towards shelter. The person who posted that zeroed in on four words that Jesus says in our lesson today. Touch me and see. Touch me and see. Jesus says those words to the, to the disciples as a way to make them less afraid, less disbelieving. Jesus says those words to the disciples to quell the wondering they have going on, even in their joy. Touch me and see. But I wonder, could they not see him until they touched him? And maybe, just maybe, we cannot experience the risen Christ until there is something that we can touch. Maybe we cannot experience the risen Jesus until we touch, until we do something tangible that might be touched like, to quote my Facebook friend, feeding the hungry, or becoming a bro big brother or sister, or helping the homeless, or of course, any number of thousands, millions of other things. One of the points about Jesus eating the fish in front of the disciples is so that they and we, and everyone through eternity, could know that he wasn't a ghost or an apparition or a figment of their imagination. He was in the flesh, in the flesh. And the question for today is how can we, how can you and I bring flesh to the resurrection at this time in our lives and our world? What might we touch or create or be a part of so that we and others might see. What opportunities exist for us to bring a tangible aspect of resurrection to the world? Touch me and see. Christ's resurrection invitation to you and I. One theologian writes, Jesus' resurrection is not to convince but to enkindle believers, enkindle you and me. The proof that God raised Jesus from the dead is not the empty tomb or even the eaten piece of broiled fish, but the full hearts of the disciples. The crowning evidence is not a vacant grave, but a spirit-filled fellowship, not a rolled away stone, but a carried away church. Resurrection makes you hungry, and Jesus asked for something to eat, and they gave him a piece of broiled fish. What does resurrection make you hungry for? What do you want to bring to the world such that one could touch or hear or smell or feel? How might Jesus pop up today, right here, right now, in our own lives? What does resurrection make you hungry for? What contribution, unique contribution, will you and only you bring to Christ's invitation to touch and see? In our seeking and our finding of that, there may just be more peace, the peace that Christ hopes for, longs for, and the peace of which Christ speaks. What does resurrection make you hungry for? Amen. We continue our worship by singing from the Maroon Pilgrim Hymnal, hymn number 193. 